Legends. So this is probably going to be the last Smurf game for a while. My voice is pretty shot, so I don't know how far I'll actually get in this. So the objective of this game is to finish the Hunter event with my brother. This has been sitting on my hard drive for a little while, but the thing is, my voice just isn't getting any better, and this will be on an outdated patch as of this actually going live, so... I pretty much just can't afford to hold it any longer. But anyway, you'll see that my brother is playing Blitz. Wasn't sure who I was going to play here, and ultimately I do settle on Udyr. I will go for Press the Attack. We have a side on top, and our mid laner was... I don't actually remember. Oh, right, Lux. So, right now you'll see that there's an Orn present. Graves can get kinda tanky with his whole grid crap. And then the enemy support's gonna be Leona, so they're gonna have two tanks. Is beyond your Due to the way this plays out, they actually go really, really heavy in the armor department, so Lux has to do a lot of the heavy lifting for the second half of the game. But you'll be able to see what impact I have in the first half. So anyway, with Udyr I like to run Ghost because you're all about running at people. And unfortunately, at this time, on the Smurf account, I do not actually have enough levels to use my own rune pages, so I'm just using the defaults. Otherwise, I would swap out... Well, I want press the attack. The thing is, there's a case to be made for three other... subtrees, secondaries, whatever you want to call them. You can go domination and get the... one that gives you movement speed on unique kills, the bounty hunter thing. I think I did that one on Shivana, it's basically the same train of thought. You can go for sorcery and go for celerity, celerity like you see here. They'll also give you movement speed, and then it also adds on to your damage through your passive, since passive gives you movement speed, the celerity will give you bonus AD, and you have a bit of a cycle going on there. And then the final one is that intuition tree, whatever the thing is called, where you can just get the boots for free at 10 minutes. Basically, those boots give you 10 extra movement speed, so they're a little bit more helpful. It's just generally when I play Udyr, I go either Mercs or Swifties. So, I don't really put too much value on getting those boots. I'd go for one of the other trees. Anyway, right here, there's a bit of a bug splat issue going on, so... Yeah, I'm not running any custom skins or anything, it's just being really obnoxious. So right there, I wanted to point out Blitz is running Fleet of Foot. That was a mistake on his part. Overall, it's not really too bad. It's going to give him more healing so he stays in lane. It's just for Blitz, you generally want something else. Otherwise, Orn has Grasp of the Undying, as does Scion. That's kind of expected on tanks these days. Getting nerfed in the coming patch, I think. Either that one or the one after. It's going to do less damage. Graves running Electrocute. I'm running Press the Attack, as is Varus and Lucian. Lux has Comet. Ari has Airy. And Leona's running Aftershock. So right here I need to point out Lucian is running Ignite. As a result, he no longer has that clutch heal to give him a little bit of mobility, or really anything to keep him afloat. I should also point out there... If you look at the match history, there were games after this one where I was playing Warwick. I just had to get the uh, less than 33 minute win for him. And I'm not going to upload the Warwick game because it was literally a 15 minute stomp. It was just painful. To Plus I'd have to salvage the replay or something and I really don't want to do that within the next hour or so. So anyway, we are going to activate Tiger Stand, so I start regenerating my mana while we wait for the stuff to start. That way I will also have a uh, damage proc on my first swing, and I can immediately reactivate Tiger for like a nice little burst to start things off with. I was looking at win rates, and I think Phoenix Udyr has a higher one than Tiger, it's just... With the way the jungle is currently, I still think Tiger is superior. Phoenix is more for farming and split pushing. Tiger is more if you want to kill crap. The nice thing about Tiger is it makes you a very, very good dragon taker, too. One thing that kind of does suck, though, is Tiger did get all of the uh, AD buffs, 
And I don't really build a lot of AD on Udyr. I get the phage from the Triforce, but I'm gonna be going Bloodraiser so I get more Tiger procs off. Yeah, I think I do actually hit full build this game. It's pretty lengthy, as you can see. So right there, the red buff has gone down. I don't really want to bother with the chicken camp. That's not a good one to take early. I'm putting my second point into turtle stance just for sustain purposes. And then once I hit that third proc of tiger or turtle, that's when you want to move over to your next stance proc. So I wasn't really paying attention while playing this game to see if... I really did have mana problems or not. So, I don't know if it's Gathering Storm or what exactly the other one that's being run with the Sorcery Tree is. Right there you can see that I was getting loads, just since I was up against the blue buff that wasn't really that much of a problem. So going Bear Stance and hit this so it lowers its defenses, then I can immediately go Tiger and just mow the sucker down. So right here, I was wondering, are they going to gang sun? I can try and get some vision and maybe catch someone out of position or something. And while I'm waiting to see if anyone turns up, let me go ahead and help myself to a big goal. So you want to be careful where you stand when you're taking this because you don't want to you don't want to see the lane minions because if they if you see them, they see you, and then the whole element of surprise thing is gone. Now, Orin is just a miserable lane to gank in the first place, simply because he will... Well, he's mean to CC while he's doing his whole fire breath thing. So if you actually hit him with bear stance while doing that, the whole cooldown still goes into effect, but he's able to just walk on out. Really, really lame. Right here, I'm just trying to get some extra gold so that I can, uh get a couple extra items when I go back, because if I went back now, I'd pretty much just upgrade my jungle item, and that would be literally it. I would like to get dagger, boots, or something. And I'm smiting the big chicken because it's just such a pain to take early. In case you're wondering, we're going to have some problems with Varus over the course of the game. And then the whole armor stacking from the enemy team is just going to make him in an even worse position. So right here I have a little bit of gold now, so I can go ahead and make my first recall. When you no longer have blue buff, you basically are dependent on your item here for sustain purposes, and if you notice... Grabbing boots, grabbing a pink ward, because when you're smurfing, not too many people actually bother looking for the pinks. You get a lot of value out of it. A lot more than you get out of, like, normal games. So overall, one thing that I like to talk about when I'm doing the whole jungle thing is certain lanes have higher gank pressure than others. Ari, you'll see her make her get away a crap load of times. Unfortunately, Leo's gonna flash to safety right there. I could have burned Ghost to try to go after her, but I'm not entirely sure it was really worth it. So anyway, with Ari, she's in the same group as LeBlanc, potentially Zed, Echo, and a few others, where it's extremely hard to gank them just because they have so damn much mobility. And it's really annoying when these are the mid lanes because that basically cuts off your route. So I mean, is your best gank opportunities then are the polar opposites of the map, the top and the bottom lanes. Like, normally it wouldn't really be a problem if there was, like, a Callista bot or someone annoying top, as long as you could at least, like, camp between the bot and the mid. You'd have a pretty iron, pretty solid iron grasp there, and you could just secure dragons, counter jungle the enemy, all sorts of things to give you a bit of an edge.
Pretty much if you ever wonder why I hate the mobile mages, it's pretty much for that purpose. So I legitimately didn't know what Varus was doing here. I strongly suspect he didn't either. So the odds of the red buff being up were extremely slim because most likely the jungler is over by blue and working the way up here. So right there was a really nice pull for the Lucian, but unfortunately he will get away. And this back I'm grabbing my dagger so that I can make a little bit more progress with my blood razor. So unfortunately, Coup de Gras is going to be getting nerfed in the near future, and that is probably like one of the best rune. Uh, well, they're technically runes, I guess, in the game. So basically, like with Udir, you just wail on someone, and then once they get low enough, everything just goes into high gear. Luckily, it's only a one percent nerf, so it's not like the end of the world or anything. But it's really nice for guys where you can just stick to them and beat the crap out of people. And right here, I thought that was like Ari's last charge. She didn't even burn the first one until I showed up. So my ghost gets wasted, and there's not really much I can do about it. Really, really lame. So right there, Lucian kills both of Botline. if we need ward kills or not. I might have. I didn't actually finish the uh, hunter event on this account. I just got enough to get a skin box. Our rage is beyond your Overall, I was trying to calculate like what would be the best return. If you went ahead and got the full 96 tokens, and then you converted all those into blue essence, that came out to be 1,920, I believe. Which is like nothing. And what's really disappointing is that's still, like, the better return you can possibly get. You could have bought, like, the champion boxes, but... Like, those... I don't think there was a guarantee that, yes, this is going to be a 6,300 champion, it could be, like, a 4,800, a 3,150, or something like that, and you just get screwed as a result. Those aren't really worth a lot of blue essence in the first place, and... This all goes back to the whole thing about it being so damn hard to get blue essence right now. Like, one other thing that I didn't really talk about before is there is a much greater element of loss of control here. So basically, for you to get new characters, you are heavily reliant on getting the champion shard, which is determined by RNG. You have to get the champion box for leveling up. Well, the capsule, I mean. And from there, you have to cross your fingers and hope it's the one you're looking for. Otherwise, you have to disenchant a bunch of stuff to be able to get enough blue essence to get the one you actually do. Because it's a 40% discount if you have the shard, and then if you don't, you only get, like, one-fifth, 20%. It just makes no sense. So right here, I stun Leona to attack the Blitz. Leona goes down. And once again, this is one of those moments where you have to ask, what is Varus doing? Now the good news is, Lux did show up to kill the Ari, and then I can go ahead and kill the Graves under tower. So Blitz lives with a sliver of health. And that fleet of foot is kind of keeping him in it, it's just I don't really recommend that on Blitz. So right here we're building towards the Trinity, I want the Sapphire Crystal. Actually, I don't think I'm running mana flow ban, so it's just more MP, I guess. But otherwise, the Stinger and the Fae, or the Stinger and the Sheen are the ones that give you CDR, and that's kind of what I want, even though the Phage does give you mobility. So right here, I'm trying to tell Varus, he's gonna kill you. Why are you sitting there in front of him, watching him, waiting for him to kill you? Their death will only our rage. 
the whole part about Varus living is more of a misplay from Lucian, because all he really needed to do was just E in there, and that was it. There was no gain away for Varus. His summoners were down, he was just gonna get blown the hell up. And if you have some doubts, just wait a second. So I pop my ghost to pick off Leona, and then he dies to Coley. Now the thing is, Lucian wanted to deal more damage instead of getting to safety, so he can die to Tiger Stance. Grave shows up. Like, I don't know if the two of us could actually beat him here. With the whole fleet of foot healing and turtle stance, I'd say we might actually have enough. And you can see if we do go for it, it just doesn't quite work out. So the next objective is make sure I have enough gold so when I do go back that I can get the Sheen and the Stinger, that only stay on the 20% CDR, I can Stance Weave a little bit better, and just by having the Stinger's attack speed you actually get more of your Stance procs off. Overall I'd say Sheen is the single most important, and you can see I fell a little bit short. I could have waited for the little gold, but I'm not really being patient when I'm playing Ood here. So right there, Ari dying to Lux is a major misplay on Ari's part. I'm not entirely sure what happened, but the Q and her ult both give her mobility to dodge all Lux's skill shots. They're all pretty slow moving or heavily telegraphed, so that's why I say if Ari dies to Lux, it's more of a misplay on the Ari's part rather than, like, skill from the Lux. So we know Graves is here. And I was hoping to actually get the stun off before Leona did her stuff, and as a result, I don't. The two of us have to piece out of here with a little sliver of health. You can see Lucian completely whiffs his coin. And here's Lux. So right here, I didn't even want to hear the guy whine. As soon as he opened his mouth, I made sure it was permanently closed. And next is going to be his pings. Our instincts are razor sharp. So right here, I needed to hit him one more time with Tiger Sands, and then he should have died to the dots. As a result, he does get away. Now, the bad news for Leona, watch this. I suspect she's a smurf because of this. She actually knew how to use the sweeper to deny vision. She didn't actually go for the ward or anything. She used that hoping that it'd break line of sight and she'd get away. And that's something you don't really see that often. Unfortunately, I wasn't really paying attention to the ranks of the players while doing this, so I don't know if she actually does have a rank, if she's actually something worth mentioning. It's just that I have to call out because it's just something you don't see very often. Now anyway, on account of being Udyr and the whole part about me needing to run in, I really do want that Cloud Dragon. It's going to give me the movement speed that I need, and I might actually be able to catch someone obnoxious. Like a specific AD carry, a paladin, if you will. So yeah, red buff is like Scion's worst enemy. You slow him, and then you can just pretty much walk away from him. To be completely honest, I'm really surprised that his uh, passive doesn't really give him any sort of tenacity, or at the very least, slow resistance, specifically for that. It's one of those reasons why I consider the Scion passive to be, like, one of the worst in the game. And yes, you can make a case it's better than his original one where he sometimes takes less damage if I remember correctly. It's still not saying a lot though. So I was kind of hoping he'd be in the middle brush, that way I could cut him off, possibly force a summoner, or maybe even his ult if it's still standing. Just didn't play out that way. Now I don't want to take this from Sion because he has a crapload of health scaling. 
and pretty much every little bit helps him. So in case you're wondering what I'm talking about, his W gives him health on last hit. If he's running Overgrowth, he will get health as stuff dies around him. And then he has Grasp of the Undying to give him even more health, because that's all not quite enough yet. So there should be a pink ward in that brush. For some reason, I already missed. <laughs> but I can go ahead and help myself with this. So as you might guess, most of those whole 14 ward kills, that mission, it can come from games like this. The other thing I have to point out is that the enemies are actually warding a lot more than I've seen while smurfing. Basically, they're not making it easy on me. So my objective here is just trying to force summoners, and then I ultimately hit that to try to limit mobility if we ever fight in the jungle. Ferris goes down, he starts spam pinging everyone else. And here I just say, you are pretty much worthless, so I don't want anything to do with you anymore. You hit him entirely. It's kind of harsh, but... Like, if he has no contribution, the last thing I need him to do is actually pollute chat with his pings, or his whining. Just in case someone else has something important to say, by letting him do that, it's more likely that whatever he... Like, the important thing is going to get ignored, or not even noticed in the first place. So right here, check out all that armor. Well, he can't see it anymore. One thing to notice from here on out is just pay attention to the enemy's armor stats, because Leona was sitting on like 150 there, I think. And for not having a completed trinity just yet, that is a lot. Granted, like half of that comes from her W alone, but that's still something I have to get through in order to kill her. And then keep in mind, I have to cut through all that hit points she has in order to actually allow Coup de Gras to proc. In the meantime, I do want to keep farming. I'm giving Bear Stance priority over Turtle Stance because I feel the need for mobility more so than just durability. And there are a few occasions here where Turtle Stance would come in handy to have like an extra point or two. So right here, they just turned on me, and we don't really have a way to answer what they have. Lucian ends up showing up too, which is like the final nail in the coffin, I'm afraid. Like, our single biggest obstacle in this game is the whole part where they have an AD carry and we don't, so we have to kind of play around that fact. So, if you notice, Varus has just now arrived, well after the fight is over. And when he shows up, he kind of wastes his ult, and that's kind of it. So right here, I wasn't really expecting blue buff to be up, it's just I wanted to verify it. Unfortunately, with the way that ward is placed, we just don't really gain a lot of information from it. So right here, bear stance still goes on cooldown, which is kind of disappointing. Luckily, this time I didn't actually burn any summoners, we got her ult out, so... It means about we have one minute of peace before that thing's back up, and then she's pretty much gets a free get out of jail free card. Now, right here, we have a bit of an interesting fight. So I want the dragon. Lux gets a little too close to Leona, and then Lucian comes from the flank. We killed the Leona. Lux is point blank to Lucian. 
and now Graves messes up. So he went back in for some reason, so Blitz pulls him. Right here I said don't chase, as a result we dodge the charm. And it's pretty much just Ari and Orn who are up to actually try to stop us from taking this Infernal. And getting this is pretty important because it's going to give Lux more AP so she can cut through all that armor they're building. But anyway, with the whole Tiger, Blood Razor, Trinity thing I have going, I pretty much can duel anyone. If I run into Graves, Ari, Lucian, whoever, and they don't run, they will die. It's really that simple. So right there, Sion felt the need to take Blue Buff for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. I don't really care to ask. Overall, I'm not really having mana problems here, so I guess you probably don't really need it. So at long last, Leona goes down, we trade Varus for it, and then we get Ari. So overall, that's more of a beautiful trade on our part since we got rid of our dead weight, and we actually did get to get their support. The Ari really isn't anything to write home about, it's just the Leona is so damn tanky, getting her off the field for a little bit is pretty helpful. So right here I'm changing my stances a bit in order to proc the passive, that way I get the movement speed from it, and I want to use Bear Stance a little bit more than the others, just because Bear Stance gives you even more speed on top. So the proper course of action right here is focus the damn tower. Only Blitz and I do that. The other two clowns decide, you know what, we're gonna go chase some sort of kill because we're idiots. So right now that tower pretty much should be dead to rights, and then once their base is cracked open we can actually do stuff afterwards, but too complicated. So, against my better judgment, I probably should just completely took off right around now. You can see Sion is pretty much dead. Ari's just poking us from a distance, and now Graves is here. So right here, I don't have enough to finish my dead mans just yet. The reason I'm going for that is pretty much just for the movement speed, so I can try to run down some of these guys who are really freaking annoying. As for Lucian, I think this is the first one I've seen build Essence Reaver. I don't really know if that's actually the new norm for him, or what exactly. He doesn't really have a lot of attack range, hence why he built the Rapid Fire Cannon, but that's not really going to alleviate too much, I'm afraid. Since he has a short range anyway, he doesn't get as much out of it, and then Varus just has long range to begin with. By the way, you can see Varus is trying to mimic the build, it's just he's fairly far behind in terms of items. And due to how far behind he actually is, I really do not want to give him red buff. So you can see right there he goes down to the Lux and the, uh, not the Lux, the Leona and the Lucian. Meanwhile, Lux does kill Graves, so there is that. Problem is, if you notice, we have Orn to the top and Ari to the right. There's not really much I can do to save the Lux, so the best I can do is Avenger. So if you want to split push, right here is when you want to put the point into Phoenix, since I was more interested in trying to duel or stop their advance. I went ahead and put the point in turtle stance so I get a bigger shield. I don't think the sustain changes in any way, it's just the shield that does. And unfortunately it's kind of hard to work AP into Udyr's build unless you're going to go for like Runic Echoes or something. Although if you do go for the whole AP Udyr with Phoenix and everything, you do have a pretty respectable shield. So just keep in mind, had we actually gotten that mid inhibitor tower, we could pretty much just walk into their base right now. Since we didn't, we have to kind of screw around until something happens that we can take advantage of. So 
also help myself to the pink ward. And Lucian gets pulled, so I immediately drop everything and just pile on him. So right here, Leona has crossed that threshold where Coup de Gras is going to shut her down. Unfortunately, the pull did not connect to Ari to take down her Banshee, so I can't really do anything to follow up on that. Now, the reason why I'm hitting these is for the lifesteal. Ari went down anyway. Not entirely sure if that was a pull or what. But we finally have the mid inhibitor exposed, and we can actually start moving around the map. We can look at Baron, we can look at Dragon, we can look at other lanes. There are tons of options that now come from opening that tower. And we could have done that earlier if not for them deciding to chase kills. So, right there, I wanted to ping to tell them hey, I'm not there, you're kind of on your own, and they are coming up. So, Lux goes down. And at this point, like, the best case scenario is just they distract them so I can take this Earth Dragon. And the advantage of taking this is then split pushing becomes an option that's going to help us if we want to contest Baron, or... Just, like, with future dragons, that'll help since we get the bonus damage to kill them. I away 3,000 gold so I can go ahead and get the dead man, so then I can start moving on to my next time. The thing I want here is sustain, so I do want something that builds out of the, uh... Neg it's not Negatron, it's the... Spectre's Helm. So I could either go for Spirit Visage or Adaptive Helm. And right here I have to make the hero play. So I absorbed pretty much all that stuff they had to throw, and I didn't die. So all their stuff is pretty much on cooldown, and Lux did burn her ult, but she should be able to handle whatever's left. If you look at the minimap, that is the case. They're all peeling back while Lux pushes out the tower, and we're pretty much fine. And then so I can work on getting my next item, I want to get all this bottom lane CS. Since the Varus is non-existent, taking this from him is not really a loss. No, I didn't know if someone was looping around for me, that's why I wanted to duck into the brush. Overall, I'm pretty low, all things considered, so I didn't really want to take any chances. And ultimately, I do go for the Spirit Visit just because it'll give me better healing from the W. It's not going to do much for improving these shields, but all that stuff's getting nerfed anyway, so... Yeah. Do not deny your Our rage is beyond your control. So right here, I'm either looking for camps to take or someone out of position. And lo and behold, Graves was out of position. Lux goes ahead and gets the kill. She did that with her ult, so she gets the partial reset. And unfortunately right here, I can't take the beating from all of them. It's just the team isn't really in position to follow up on that in any way, shape, or form. You can see Varus just comes from the flank, throws his ult, and has to run away. He can't actually take advantage of any of the CC or the automatic stacks that come with that. So that goes Lux. I'm not entirely sure it was wise for Sion to chase that. Right here, as long as Blitz is peeling for Varus, even he should be able to get off a couple auto attacks. Had to do a blind hook, unfortunately the answer's empty. And the next thing I'm going to want is Thornmail. Just so I don't have to worry about the illusion damage as much, since he is a threat.
So at the very least, he did get Graves a Slash. <laughs> That's pretty much all I can say. And my throat is reaching its limit, if you can't tell me that. So I want this one to give me vision behind me, see if anyone's approaching, and worst come to worst, that will be my escape route. Now I'm not entirely sure why Lux wearing Demolish, but if you look, she kind of is. Mid inhibitor has a respawn, so we no longer have the supers working in our favor. And what I'm looking for here is just to go in and backdoor it, but Leona happened to be nearby. Plus with the whole rank 1 Phoenix, oh it's Graves that's there. So the whole rank 1 Phoenix, I don't really have a lot of wave clear. So right here I have to alternate my stances, favoring the bear stance to get away. And overall, while I did take some damage, I can really just duck into the jungle and heal it up with Tiger and my innate lifesteal. So I think the jungle line does still give you 10%. Right there, Cyan had to use his ult as a getaway. So keep in mind that is one less initiation tool we have at our disposal. We're pretty much reliant on Blitz Q or Lux Q to start off our fights. Now, unfortunately right here, Leona happened to be in the exact right place. So she lands that and I go down. So basically, if you can't tell what they're doing, that's called grouping. And if you can't tell what my team is doing, it's called scratching their ass. So no, Sion has been screwing around in the top lane. He hasn't really done anything to try to... well, do anything. So right here, we have the fight breaking out, and he no longer has his ult to use, even though, like, right now, he could keep them trapped in their tower. So he shows up, and that's kind of it. He doesn't really do anything. So when his ult finally does come up and he's able to use it, it is well outside of the tower, and you can see that he's not really going to get much going for him. Had he done that under tower, he would be alive, and then he could just go take the mid inhibitor. Not the case. Overall, that was in the end a 4 for 4, and that's not really a position we should be in when we're... We have such a stranglehold on the map, we have the dragons and everything. For us to be trained even means we are doing something fundamentally wrong. And right there, that would give them the ace. So right here I didn't know if anyone was actually going to come down to try to stop me. You can see Graves in the top lane. And ultimately I do get to sneak this, which makes it a little bit easier if we decide to split push. The thing is, you have to remember, like most tanks, Scion is pretty bad when it comes to doing that. He needs the Zerat portal in order to actually tank something with a decent speed. Right there you want to make sure you keep, uh, keep taking the blue buff so that Ari doesn't have it. Even if she's like fine for mana, you're still denying her a little bit of CDR. And right here, Lucian is just horribly out of position. He thought he was safe in his own jungle. So once again, here's the whole goon squad. It's just, this time without Lucian to deal damage, they're not really a threat. Overall, I can't hurt them because if you look, Orn has, I think, Frozen Fist and Sunfire. I don't have any armor penetration at the moment, and I'm never really going to be getting any. So right here, I just want to go from one pick to the next. And as a result, down goes Graves. So right here, we have a window where it's five of us versus three of them. Not entirely sure what was with the whole s teleport thing, but he didn't do it. Right here, I had to take a nice little piece out of Leona, kind of deter her from trying to do anything else. She unfortunately didn't quite take the hit, though. 
So remember, once she falls below half hit points, Coup de Gras is going to start kicking in, and that can, I can finally rip her to shreds. So she thought she got to safety, one blitz hook later, she goes down. Now, you can't really do anything about Morn because of all his armor. Ari goes from behind, Lucian comes from the top. And, yeah. I guess Lucian didn't take me seriously. So overall, you can see, we didn't really get that much for that whole fight. The good news is we did get kills, Lux finally got the bottom inner. And finally, Sion does get the top inhibitor turn. Now, unfortunately, getting the inhibitor itself is asking for too much. But anyway, right there I have the thorn mail, so the next thing I want to do is actually get a elixir. I think it's going to be a little while before I actually do get one. If you're concerned about CC, you want to go for the elixir of iron. If you want to make sure that your dueling's a little bit better, you want the life steal in. So how about that? Lux survives just barely due to getting enough mana for her Q. Doing so does prox Graves Mel Maw Melmordia, so that is a, something we can kind of leverage to our advantage in the next fight. In the meantime, I am max level, I'm effectively full build, so I want to try to close this out before people actually manage to reach full build themselves, or start to equalize level. And one thing I'm keeping in mind is the possibilities, I may need to sell my jungle item to get Blade of the Room King. Luckily it doesn't actually come to that, but we have an interesting Baron fight here. So right here we kept Leona out of the entire thing as well as Ari, it's just for some reason my team decided to stay in the pit, and as a result they hand us over to Graves. Now the good news is I do show up. They're all low enough for Coup de Gras to basically give me the kills. Graves goes down, Lucian goes down, Orn goes down. Leona died while that was going on, meaning Ari is the only one up with Baron. Now, with the supers right here in mid, that means the base is pretty much up for grabs. So I'm not looking to kill her anymore, and I'm basically trying to tell the team, hey, we want to just end this. Like, Ari, due to how poorly she's just been playing, she can't really stop us. So right here I need to break the tower aggro. And that's all, folks. So Blitz showed up, but too late to land the pull. And here's your endgame screen. So we got a few tokens. And there you go, you get to see all the numbers. S minus in the end. Those are the objectives I still had to do. In terms of damage, due to the whole armor stacking, Lux managed to pass me. If not for that, I should have had that. For them, they didn't really have anyone that really stood out. And in terms of damage shaking, of course, that's going to be me. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm the Hero of Light. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.